The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. The second presentation today is going to be mine. It is repair application number nine. And it's on pre-placed aggregate. Oh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is John Lund. Uh, I uh, run the investigative engineering group at Martin Martin in Denver, Colorado. The investigative, uh, the investigative group is uh, about 30 people, uh, all structural engineers that, that handle uh, investigations and repair of all types of, con of structures, not just concrete. But and I am uh, the past chair of the Repair Committee 546, and I'm the incoming chair of the Repair Specifications Committee 563. So I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, some of these more unusual repairs, and one of them is, is pre-placed concrete aggregate, something that many of you probably have not run into in the past, but it is a very effective repair in certain applications. So uh, what is pre-placed concrete aggregate? I'm hoping to uh, convince you that there is an application for it in your case. ACI 116R defines pre-placed concrete aggregate as concrete that is produced by placing con coarse aggregate in a form and later injecting a Portland sand cement ground, usually with admixtures. So this is, what pre this is essentially how pre-placed concrete aggregate is installed. You, uh, you prepare your, your surfaces, you build the formwork, then you install the aggregate first, kind of backwards from the way many times it's done. Then you attach the, the grouting pipes and, and mix the grout, then you pump the grout into the application. So that's the way it's done. So what are the applications for this particular repair? It's it's really, a, there's a number of applications. One, where low volume change is required. These materials shrink very, very little. Where you really need the concrete to participate in stress distribution. As many of you know, particularly for vertical repairs for columns, if you remove concrete from the column and then you attach a uh, a patch, it's almost impossible to get the, the new repair material to take any load. By using the pre-placed concrete, you get the intimate con uh, contact and you can get that repair material to participate more easily in, in taking load. High density concrete, you can get very high density concrete. You can use, you can use heavyweight aggregates and you can get that. That's particularly used in the nuclear industry. Uh, closely spaced reinforcement, because you can pack the aggregate in by hand before the, the mortar is installed, you can, get, you can get it placed. You don't have a problem with the aggregate not being able to reach where you want it to be. Where you need overhead contact, where if you're going to patch in something overhead and you really need that intimate contact, you can get it there. Uh, high lift placements, placements, and one of the areas where it is used the most is in underwater. Uh, it would seem almost counterintuitive that you could build something that you could place underwater uh, with when you're pumping in the, the mortar later. But in fact, this is, this is used very, very commonly in underwater concrete placements because what ends up happening is you place the aggregate, you pump the mortar in, and the mortar displaces the water as it's being installed. So this is what you need to do in order to uh, install a, a pre-placed concrete uh, aggregate repair. So first thing you want to do is, is clean it up. So you're checking the surface. You got to make sure that, that you end up with a saturated surface dry condition. Frequently, uh, it, that's not terribly difficult in these types of applications because it takes a while to get all the formwork in, to get the aggregate in, and get it uh, get it formed. So you'll spray water on the the con on the area that you're trying to get uh, trying to mate to, and then you'll place the aggregate. You'll build the forms. By the time you've got all that, that surface is dry, and you've got a good saturated surface dry condition. 
and then the aggregate is typically saturated with water before you place it in the forms and uh, it's generally a uh, uh, it's generally a, 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 a material that is uh, about it's, it's within this category of 10 percent passing the uh, three quarters and no more than two so it's a it's a pretty uniform material and then you're going to install your formwork and the, the trick with the formwork is that you're going to install it under significant pressure. So the formwork needs to be tight. And one of the tricks of the trade is that you can't come in and cover up your mistakes with caulk because of the pressure that you're installing this material in. It'll blow out the caulk and then the, the mortar will, will, uh, will leak. So here's how you do it. The typical mixing equipment is that uh, a, a typical two-tub mixer with a with a water meter, and then you're going to test the the grout itself in a as a uh, flow cone. Typically, uh, 10 to 30 seconds is what you're looking for on the flow cone, and that's a flow cone. For those of you who haven't seen it, that's a flow cone up there. And then this is you don't normally do it with plexiglass, but this particular Example has the, the plexiglass so you could kind of see it. And you're going to start pumping at the bottom and allow the mortar to move up. The, uh, if you have a, a high application, a deep application, it's common to have a number of, of tubes along the side of the application to work so that you can start filling at the bottom. And then when it reaches a certain point, you cap that up. You, you install your pump at another location up and you keep working your way up. And when you're finished, this is a mock-up on the right, when you're finished, the curing is just the same as any conventional concrete. So if you've got this type of application, you strip your forms, you add your curing compounds or a wet cure and cure this material. So some additional things to think about when you're using pre-placed concrete aggregate. You can get very, very good strengths with this material, which shouldn't be surprising, because you get point-to-point -point contact on your aggregate, so you get very high strengths. This reports that we've seen some strengths up to about 13,000 PSI using this type of, a, of, an aggregate, of an application. You have excellent durability. You get air entrainment. We'll talk about this in a middle, minute, but most of the mortars include an aluminum in the, uh, in the mix, and the aluminum creates air entrainment naturally. And then uh, the heat of hydration can be controlled perhaps more easily with this, with this method than others because you can actually take the aggregate and cool it before you place it in the forms. And so you can get some cooler uh, temperatures and control the heat of hydration in a mass application if you need to. So this is what we were talking about just a minute ago. The grout fluid fluidifiers are used, and they usually include not only a water-reducing admixture, but aluminum powder. And the aluminum powder produces a gas which causes the small bubbles and that which help with your freeze thaw durability. And if you don't use a mortar, a cementitious mortar, you can also use an epoxy. Uh, but the worry about epoxies is that the epoxies will, are exothermic and they'll generate heat. As, as, so you need to be careful about not using those in large. But for a, a smaller, thinner application, they can be used quite well. These are just a couple of photos showing some historical applications of the pre-placed concrete method. This is a, a photo of a viaduct that was really in very, very poor condition. This, the, the repair was made use, using pre-placed aggregate, and this was 26 years ago. The, the condition of the, of the repair was still performing quite well in a very difficult environment and also just some historic pictures of pre-placed concrete used in some uh, reactor settings. The first one is a biological containment structure. And you can see this gentleman packing the aggregate around some very tightly placed uh, reinforcement. And then on the right side, this is another pre-placed concrete uh, 
pre-placed aggregate concrete application in a nuclear containment structure. So why is it, how would you know if it's right? It's certainly not right in all applications. It's not a very common procedure, but there are some cases where it really does make sense. One of the reasons why you don't see it very much is it is significantly more expensive than more conventional repairs. Why? Because the formwork is a lot more expensive. You've got to build very tight formwork. You've got to build formwork that's capable of resisting the high pressures that come along with the, the installation of pumping in of the mortar. And so there's, there's more costs. But there are some cases where it makes sense and where it should certainly be in your tool bag, uh, where particularly where you really need low shrinkage or where putting, installing a more conventional mix would be impossible just due to the congestion of the reinforcement. And that's my presentation. So thank you very much for your attention.